Well, hello again from Dan's Fab Lab, uh, where we are working on a 1977 Toyota Land Cruiser. And uh, kind of a little update, the half tub has been ordered. Not sure when it'll be here. Could be a couple of weeks, maybe even a little longer. Hoping quicker than that, but probably, uh, I'm just not going to count on it. But anyway, uh, in the meantime, there's a few small little projects I thought we could maybe knock out. Uh, one uh, of which is the uh, rocker panels here, both inner and outer. Um, I may also have to um, fabricate this B-pillar right here because the half tub comes to this seam right here. Uh, and I don't believe that the B-pillar is involved in that. Um, there will be some uh, rebuilding of the A-pillar down at the bottom where the uh, rocker panel uh, goes into that. But then one of the easy ones for today was this little vent window here, or the vent door. Um, fairly easy, so I think what we'll do today is we'll uh, knock out the paper templates uh, and get a wooden buck made uh, and get the sheet metal cut out. Maybe even get it all hammered out today. We'll see what happens, but uh, we've got to get the uh, right measurements and everything for it. So that is where we will begin with a few things today. Now, again, the reason for replacing these doors is she's rusted through right up in here, pretty crusty right up in here. The flange is pretty well destroyed up and through here. The door on the other side where the bracket from the inside meets up with the actual door, it's actually rusted through. So this size of a panel it's not really worth the time to try and patch that or whatever. The deal, just make a new one. Going to do it out of 20 gauge steel. Uh, it doesn't support anything. It doesn't have to be tough and rugged. It just pops open up the steel. So to start with on this, I'm just going to take a sheet of paper and it to get our dimensions and a magnet. Get that tied up into there. Got some smaller magnets here. That if I can get them apart. Tough little rascals, but little button magnets. And uh, that will help us to, let's see, there's the bottom. That's the shape of it, basically. So I think we're pretty good. Standing. Then I got a soapstone. Um, find my lines. I know that my line goes right up in through here. You can kind of see where the soapstone is wide, so wherever it meets up with the, the body panel, you're going to get a double line and I kind of know where my door goes then. And the inside line will be my door. The outside line kind of represents the gap, although I won't be using that to determine the gap or anything like that. We'll adjust that as we build it and flange the door over. But we have a template anyway for right now, and we'll make it just a little larger than this inside line to compensate. And then once we get the door off, we can match it to the wood buck that we're making to make sure that we're right on track, that it fits snugly inside the flange on the door. And that way when we flange the new metal, it's gonna be right where this door was, and we'll be good to go. And so a close up view here shows you the lines that we were able to make um, with regard to the door. Uh, we will cut the buck just a tad larger than this inside line, and then we'll sand everything down to where we can fit this original door once we take the brackets off and everything. We can fit that over it. We know we're going to have an exact uh, duplicate of this door uh, when it's all said and done. The original plan was to make these doors out of 20 gauge. Apparently, I've used all my 20 gauge. So they're going to be hardy little doors made out of 18 gauge. No problem. We'll still get them knocked out. Um, so we'll put the old Stone Wilcox to work here. I got to shear off what I need for that. Now 
nice and square. I'm going to trim them out about, uh, well anyway, so that I can make at least a half inch flange all the way around. Ultimately, it'll only be about an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch as a flange, but uh, if I start out with a half inch flange all the way around, or five eighths, whatever it works out to be, um, it's easy to trim that off, get it out of the way, and uh, make uh, make the flames that I need. Okay, so we've got both our panels, or basically our doors, laid out, cut out, but we're not going any further till we get the wood buck made. That is a celebratory sip of coffee. It appears that the driver's vent door is not as bad as I thought it was. This is some surface rust here. It'll clean up, we'll treat it and uh, it's gonna be no issue at all. So the driver's door does not need, the driver's side vent door does not need to be recreated. Saves a bunch of work right there. There is, however, a hole on the passenger side door, somewhere in the middle there, where the bracket underneath here fits to it. One thing important to note is that just barely visible are the uh, spot welds where this bracket is spot welded to the door. And in a vehicle like this, when you're doing a restoration, um, these things are important. Um, however, they were not visible. The primer alone was able to feather those in. And when you painted them until I took the paint off, you didn't know where they were from the from this side. So, I'll stay with that. I think that's how it would have been originally so that you can't see the uh, spot welds. We'll see what the other door is. But again, on a, on a restoration like this, uh, with these type of vehicles, which really is nothing but a glorified tractor, um, the spot welds, the seam welds, things like that, those were all important to guys who collect these type of vehicles. And uh, it had a lot to do with the resale value. So we're going to try to stay as close to original about, you know, fabricating things uh, as we can be. Uh, but at the same time, there'll be a couple little changes to this vehicle, and I think she'll still have some pretty good value when we're done. And so this is the passenger side vent door, and you can see right back through there, there's a hole rusted through it there, probably a quarter inch square. This is actually rusted through, you can see pinholes, you can see daylight through that down here. The backside, just really, that's pretty grody. Um, this thing is seriously roached. So this is gonna have to be rebuilt and uh, then it should be like new. So we're just, we're not gonna be careful. Just gonna drill out these four spot welds and uh, break this apart, clean everything up. And then of course, make our template right off the original door. convince it. There it is. So we'll make our other spot welds right in there. I got a little bit of a pucker because of the pulling, but I can flatten that out. No big deal. 
and we'll clean this up as best we can to use it for uh, our main template. I found a piece of plywood here, and in making my butt turns out, it's almost exactly what I need. So I'm hanging over the thickness of the metal here and the thickness of the metal here, and then I'll cut this out and uh, actually trim on the inside of the line as I cut here. And uh, that should have it to where once I sand it a little bit, this should set right over top of the bottom buck, which is of course what we'll be bending the flanges over. And uh, there will also be another one cut out very similar um, and probably to identical side. They'll go on top and, and this metal will be clamped, or this metal will be clamped between the two pieces of plywood so that it doesn't move and I can hammer over the edges. And uh, we'll show you what we end up with. of a shadow and we'll go throw a headlamp on. It's on there, it fits on like a glove. I have just a little bit of a gap on this side. I took a little bit too much meat off the wood, but if I'm careful, I can, I can uh, hammer that back anyway. I've still got this for a template to match up to what I make, and uh, so we should still be okay. No big deal. But that fits right on there, and you about gotta pry it off. So that's a good fit. Um, there's enough of a gap in everything that uh, nothing is going to be bothered by um, if, if I happen to be a few like gazillimeters oversized, but I don't think I will be. She's pretty good there.